than 100 cities in North America in a bidding war this morning for the next Amazon headquarters. The fight is almost over. Today is the last day for cities to submit their applications to Amazon. And the company has a wish list, uh, which all the mayors know about. The online giant is looking for a metro area of 1 million people or more, access to a mass transit system, close proximity to an international airport, Let's talk about that. Joining me right now is the mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Mayor G.T. Uh, Bynum, and Danbury, Connecticut, Mayor Mark Bowton. Good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great to Thanks be here. Thanks for having so, me. Uh, mayor Bynum, let me kick it off with you. Why did you throw your city into this bidding war? Tell us how you fit this bill. We think we're really well placed from a logistical standpoint. There's no city in America that combines our quality of life here in Tulsa with uh, the, the overall population base. Uh, we're bringing in the greatest public park gift in America next year, the $400 million gathering place. We just obtained Bob Dylan's archive, which the Washington Post has said is going to lead to Tulsa becoming the research center in the world for 20th century music. Uh, we have the arena of the year beating out the Staples Center and Madison Square Garden. So we have all of that, and yet we have the ease of a, a middle American city, and we're uh, close proximity to 750,000 people uh, in this region that work in today businesses uh, and professions that Amazon will need for this headquarters. Wow. So we think we are uniquely positioned because of our placement in the country right by one of Amazon's main competitors just an hour and a half to our east mm. uh, and we think we can hang with cities that are a whole lot bigger than us from a population standpoint right. because of the the placement we happen to have and the culture of our city matches Amazon's very closely. Mayor Bowen, what do you think? How, how do you compare? Well, listen, we're uh, leveraging a regional approach to this. So we're actually uh, working with Eastern New York. We're working with Lower Fairfield County, Upper Fairfield County, and, of course, our city, which uh, compromises about 85,000 people. Uh, we have plenty of space and room to do this. We have access to all of the mass transit things, all the things that they're looking for to be successful. But we really believe in our uh, application. And, and, look, at the end of the day, uh, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. So we're going to take our shot. We want those 50,000 jobs. The economic uh, spinoff and derivative is incredible and, and will transform Connecticut. And I think this will lead to Connecticut comeback. So some cities are really getting creative in, in an effort to stand out. Check out what some of people are doing in, in Tucson, Arizona, for example. Officials uprooted a 21-foot tall cactus and tried to deliver it to Amazon Seattle headquarters. Uh, over in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, they constructed a giant Amazon box and placed them around the city. And then in Missouri, Kansas City's mayor reportedly uh, bought a thousand items from Amazon and wrote reviews for each one. So you posted a video on Facebook, didn't you? Mayor? I did. And Alexa says that, you know, we should be there, that the HQ2 should be in Danbury, Connecticut. You, you, <laughs> invited, you invited Amazon to Danbury. Well, let's, we have the clip. Let's watch that. We not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk. I'm a proud Amazon customer. So Alexa, where is the best place for Amazon to locate its second world headquarters. Danbury, Connecticut. I told you so. <laughs> She's on point all the time. Alexa knew. <laughs> well, I, I think one thing about Amazon, you know, they do everything, but they're really a, a logistics company also. Yeah. So right. going from Seattle for their original headquarters, you know, to have a place over on the East Coast, I think, would be very important for them. So and I, I think you have you guys five corporations running. that already have global headquarters. In, oh, in, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, you know, we were once a hat city, and now we're uh, a multi-corporation uh, uh, community. I mean, we're 70 miles from New York City, so we have all the assets that are here as well. So, look, we think it's – we're a dark horse candidate. There's no question about that. But uh, we think we're a player in this, and um, we're going to take a shot at this thing. You know, you're so right that you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. That That's something that they say a lot in the Navy. But I want to ask – Mayor Bynum, you know, you, you were talking about uh, about your city and how it can benefit. But when you're competing with um, with cities like Chicago, I know Mayor Emanuel has already spoken with Jeff Bezos about a potential move there. Companies like Kraft have already uh, planned to move uh, to move there. How do you compete with cities like that? Well, I think you compete by being focused as a community on building the best city that you can. Uh, there are plenty of cities that have a larger population than we do uh, that we don't think can compete with us from a quality of life standpoint uh, and from an access to uh, the human capital standpoint. Again, we, we have uh, the population base in this region uh, working in the industries that Amazon needs to staff this headquarters. Uh, and, and beyond that, 
uh, we have a quality of life here that really a city many times our size would typically expect, but we have it with the convenience uh, of a city of our size here in Tulsa. Uh, so so, so uh, population base certainly uh, will play a factor, and like my, my colleague from Danbury, we're, yeah. we recognize we're an underdog, but uh, we believe that we will be competitive, and our goal is that the team at Amazon is both surprised and impressed when they open our proposal. Mm. I, I think the most important aspect that uh, Amazon's going to look at is what's the incentive for them, especially on the tax side. So I guess this goes mm -hmm. to both of you guys. We'll start with GT. What are you guys willing to give Amazon in a tax incentive way to entice them to come? Because we know it's always about the money, yep. and they're going to go where the best incentive is for them. You know, we're a big college football state, and our head coaches don't give their playbook away to the opposing coach right when the game starts. So yeah. uh, we're not going to talk about what our, our incentives are. We do have, uh, thanks to the partnership that we have with the state of Oklahoma in making this proposal, a very good incentive proposal that we think the, the team at Amazon is going to be impressed by. Well, yeah, but I, mean, I don't want to give that away today. It's all about taxes. I mean, like, like Mr. Mayor, in Danbury, I mean, look how many companies have moved out of Connecticut sure. because of Malloy and his taxes. Sure. Um, what are you going to do about that? Well, we'll, we'll partner with the state of Connecticut, obviously. Same thing with us. We're not going to spill our popcorn or eat our popcorn be before we see the movie. But at the end of the day, um, we think we can put the right in economic incentive in front of these folks to be able to get them there. But it's not all about the money. I mean, look, we're not going to completely uh, uh, throw ourselves at Amazon. We want to we play a little coy here, too, in terms of doing the stance. And we'd love to get them uh, here. And, and I think that's better than just uh, you know, putting everything on the table at once. Are you going to run for governor against Malloy next Time? We're looking very closely at that race, and uh, we'll see what happens there. We, we think there's an opportunity, and, and we think it's time that uh, we make Connecticut great again. So, so if, you, if, you were, if you were to run against Governor Malloy for the governorship of Connecticut, will you cut taxes? Oh, and I'll eliminate the income tax. We have a plan uh, to eliminate the income tax over the next 10 years. So we're going to bring people back to Connecticut. Uh, we're going to keep our retirees to stay in Connecticut. It's going to be the place to be. Yeah, I'll move to Connecticut if you do that. I mean, like, I'm, looking, I'm looking for a way out. I mean, come on. It, 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 but the problem uh, is, is, I'll, is I'll cut your grass. A lot of people from New York, I think, would move to Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. I know a couple people who just bought condos in Connecticut. And guess what? They can't go to Jersey. Jersey's getting worse in taxes. Right. So yeah. if, if you do that. Right. And if the state and local deduction move. is eliminated, yeah, people will be <laughs> to move to and we've been working on this case. plan for eight months. It's a solid plan, and it's something I think everybody's going to be impressed with. It's different, and we are the land of steady habits, but we'll work it out. Well, that's the popcorn you need to spill. It, you know, so <laughs> if you're going to run, we need, to, we need, yeah, we need those exactly details. Every right. couple of weeks, we're launching a few details here and there, Good. again, just to show people a little bit about what's going on. But again, we want to play a little coy here as well, too, in that particular arena. But if you're going to run against uh, uh, Governor Malloy, you've got to make it known soon, right? I mean, the, the race is next year. Well, uh, Governor Malloy is not running again, oh, okay. um, so it's going to be an open sea, and um, we'll have uh, some kind of announcement probably in January, February as to what our intentions are. Okay, we'll be watching that. Uh, Mayor G.T. Bynum, Mayor Mark Boughton, good to see you both. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.